focus faster with the filter toolbar. We have an entire course devoted to display filtering. That's Wireshark Core Training 9, Create and Apply Display Filters. So we won't spend too much time in display filtering in this section. I've opened up the trace file called tr-cnn.pcapng. This is the filter toolbar. It's where we apply display filters to the trace file. The first thing you'll find is the filter button. This lists all the saved display filters, and if we wish to use a saved display filter, we can just simply select it off of the list and click OK. This automatically has applied this display filter, and when we want to know how many packets have matched our display filter, we can look down in the status bar in the displayed area. 95.5% of the packets in this trace file contain a TCP header. I'll click Clear to remove the filter. Notice that the display filter area has auto error detection and it also has auto complete. So if I type in the letter T, I can see all of the display filters that are available that begin with the letter T. If I type in TCP and then put a dot, I can see all of the display filters that begin with TCP dot. I can scroll through the list and pick a display filter off of the list, or I can keep typing. I'll keep typing TCP analysis dot, and notice that before I put in the dot, Wireshark changed the background to green to indicate that there is a valid display filter called TCP dot analysis. I'm going to type in, and notice that I started with FLA, and Wireshark has auto-completed for me to finish the line. TCP.analysis.flags. Wireshark has three colors that it can place in the display filter area. Red when the syntax is incorrect, green when the syntax is correct, and yellow as a warning. This syntax is correct, so I'll click Apply. Notice that down on the status bar, it indicates that 232 packets, or 4.9% of the trace file contents, match my filter. If I have a filter that I like, and I think I'm going to apply it again and again, I may want to save it up here as a filter expression button. To save a filter as a filter expression button, Click the Save button and provide a name for your filter. Now I'll clear out my filter, and if I want to quickly apply that filter in the future, I can just simply click the button. Notice that we don't have a lot of room up here for filter expression buttons. If you run out of room, Wireshark will create a drop-down list of the buttons that don't fit on the filter toolbar. If you have so many that the drop-down list becomes crowded, then it will have a down arrow allowing you to scroll through the list. Wireshark remembers the last 10 display filters you created by default. This is one of the options that we can change in our preference settings in Wireshark. We can have Wireshark remember more than 10 of the last display filters if desired. The Expression button will open up Wireshark's Filter Expression window. This window can help walk you through the filtering process. If I know I want to create a filter for FTP traffic, I can type in FTP to jump to that point. I'm not interested in creating a filter based on FTP data, let's say. Perhaps I'm interested in creating a filter based on FTP commands. In that case, I'll select FTP File Transfer Protocol, and we can see the names of all the possible filters that I could create. Perhaps I'm looking for FTP response codes that are greater than a certain value, or that are equal to a certain value. In this case, Wireshark has a number of predefined values that I can use. I can select one of these values 
directly off of the list and click OK. Notice that my previous filter was still in the filter area. Make sure that you clear out the filter before you go into the expressions area or remove the filter that you already had in place from the end of your new filter. You'll know when the syntax is correct because the background will turn green. We will go into more detail on display filtering in Wireshark Core Training 9, Create and Apply Display Filters.